Yeah. 
Way up there 
know this song, church. Sing it with me. I thank God. You see, Jesus is the lighthouse, and from the rocks of sin, well, he has shown his light all around me. I 
was only like six, seven years old. I didn't know what a sang was. What's a sang, Grandma? She goes, son, it's when people of God get together, love on Jesus, and they sing to their heart's content. And I didn't know what a sang was back then, but honey, I know what a sang is now. Amen. So I want y'all to help me on this singing song. At the count of three, I want everybody here to shout amen. And when I point to you in this song, that's your word. So kids, y'all help me. Everybody help me. Ready? One, two, three. Amen. This is a free will Baptist church, right? I've had Presbyterian people shout for me all, amen? Well, it's free Baptist. We loud and proud. Let's try that again. You ready? One, two, three. Amen. amen. It's a good day for a singing. That's an old-fashioned thing. Put your hands together. Let's worship God. It's a good day for a singing. Everybody here, clap your hand. It's a good day for a singing. Let's shout and sing. Oh, 
uh, just kind of practicing on it. We'll get the right camera cues on this. But I like playing the piano. First of all, I want to say this. I stand before you nothing without Christ. He is the breath that I breathe. He's the songs that I sing. I can't even walk without him holding my hand. That's what he means to me. I don't know about y'all. But I thank God for my talent. A little boy from Alabama that's moved around all over the East Coast, from New York City to Virginia to D.C., Carolina's all back to Tennessee. I've been everywhere. I can literally sing that song, Brother Jenkins. I've been everywhere, man. Birmingham. I, yeah, I've been everywhere. But ladies and gentlemen, if God could take me, a nobody and a nothing, and maybe somebody and a something, church, how many know he can do the same thing for you? Amen. How many know we're all born to serve the Lord? Amen. That's our whole purpose out of life, to be a servant to man, tell somebody about Jesus and his goodness and his love. Folks, I thank God I've never had a piano lesson, can't read notes, couldn't tell you what a note was if you give it to me, but I play eight instruments. Now, how many here is left-handed? Anybody left-handed here? Y'all you, raise your right hand. That's good. <laughs> of course, we're always in the right frame of mind, I always say this. Amen. But you know, all my good, uh, and brother, I used to have a, a guitar that was right-handed and said, Brother Poole, why don't you just get you a left-handed guitar? I didn't even know they made them. Amen. And so I always turned the strings around and the bridge around, and that's how I played it. But I found it, bought a left-handed guitar. I have a Fender Stratocaster, Telecaster, and got a left-handed banjo, too. So now this song here has got all that in there, a little pedal steel. I got a whole bunch of pee on it because I put it in there. And uh, I like this song. This ought to be every Christian's theme song called Keep On the Firing Line. Amen. I like it. I ain't even got there yet. Amen. Honey, this, if this song don't light your fire, your wood's wet. I can tell you that right now. Amen. But this song is a great song, and I love to play it. I hope you enjoy it. It's called Keep On The Fire Line. Boy.
it's called These Hands. And I like the church. When I play the piano, it's not my hands. It's the Lord playing through me. I'm just the best of Amen. And folks, I just want to do one more song. I'm going to read a scripture for you here before we close. And I love to sing for the Lord. I really do. I've been at the piano many, many years. I've probably written over 200 songs. And I want to sing you a song that God gave me when I was going through some things in my own life. Set up the piano, Brother Jenkins, as the Lord started giving me the words to this song. I hope I got it cued right here. But folks, how many know the touch of God is like the one to touch before? How many know that today? Amen. This is a new song, Gary. You will come and do it, folks. How many know the Lord is here and wants to touch you in a very special way? Listen. There is something about the wind when blows. When nighttime falls, you see the moon as it glows. And like the sun beaming down from above, you feel the presence and the warmth of His great love. The touch of God is like no other touch before. He'll touch your soul. Again. 
Folks, we live in a time, you know, 1950, we're a Christian nation. This is 2013. We are not a Christian nation. We have more isms, more religions. People don't know what to believe anymore. How many know who the author of confusion is, church? The devil. He comes roaring about seeking whom he may devour. You see, I had to learn it the hard way because I'm hard-headed. Any hard-heads here? Don't learn. Thank you. We got honest people. Right? <laughs> Folks, I learned the hard head. Grew up in Alabama. My dad was in radio and television. We moved from Alabama to New York City. A cultural shock all by itself right there. Grew up in Brooklyn, New York. And when you live in New York, you got to speak another kind of language, I think. You know, I want a cup of coffee over here. you got to learn to speak a different, different language when you live in New York. From New York, my dad worked to, uh, he worked for the RCA Corporation. He used to work for Jimmy Dean. How many remember Jimmy Dean? He was a country singer at one time, and you know, he sold Pope sausage. You know, he was the sausage king, right? And my dad worked for his television show for many years. They canceled. We moved to D.C., then over to Virginia, from Virginia over to Maryland, back to Alabama, back up to Virginia. I said, Dad, would you please make up your mind where you want to live? I've been to 14 different schools, and I'm only in the fourth grade. <laughs> I've been everywhere, man. So finally, they settled in the great state of Maryland. I graduated high school. And on the sixth day of graduation, I announced to my mother, I'm moving to Nashville, Tennessee, Music City, U.S. of A. You see, folks, music has always been a part of my life. And I told my mama, I'm moving there. I'm going to be the next country superstar. George, how many know the devil's a liar? <laughs> he makes grass look greener on the outside, but how many know it's artificial turf? That devil's a liar. And folks, listen to me today. He's out to kill you. He don't like this church on this corner. He don't like your preacher. He don't like you coming here. He definitely don't like me. You know why? Because we're a thorn to the kingdom of hell. Church, the Bible decrees, and if you're a born-again Christian, bought by his spirit, born of his blood, church, how many know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world? Church, you've got power today through the blood of Jesus Christ. Church, how many know Christians need power today? Amen. Give me some of that old-time power like the old hymn song. Church, I had to learn the hard way because I'm hard-headed. I moved to Nashville, started singing at the Opry, and I backed up some Opry people. From the Opry, I went into rock and roll music. From rock and roll music, I went into pop music. My mama said, son, you just born in the wrong era because you really like them old songs. I like old. I don't know we don't really have good music today. How many know that? Church, we have bump and thump. I don't know about over here in Loud, but if you come over to Sevierville, you can see cars just right off, off the ground. Y'all have that over? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Thank you, I'm not alone. <laughs> country, not even country no more. Man, it was a time where a gentleman stood up to the microphone. Hello, darling. It's nice to see you. You know it was Conway Twitter, right there. But I don't even, I couldn't even tell you, country is pop nowadays. It's not even traditional country. I still like that station here in Loud, WBIK or whatever that station, AM 850, they play and they still have that traditional country sound. I like old music. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I love the big band. How do you remember the big band sound? Y'all remember Swing and Jazz and Glenn Miller and Artie Shaw, all those guys? I love that kind of music. Pastor, I put together a 25-piece orchestra. I played piano in the nicest jazz clubs and the nicest restaurants and resorts all across America. And you see, church, I knew every song out of the great American songbook. Fly me to the moon, let me play among the stars. Unforgettable, misty. How many still remember those kind of songs? I love that kind of music. Long story short, I was in Baltimore, Maryland, in a nightclub. And I was singing there at a sold-out audience that night. And a friend of mine came through the back door, and I haven't seen him in a long time. I grew up with him. His name was Tony Denuzio. And he was an Italian boy. And let us tell he was a PK. How many know what a PK is? Preacher's kid, right? He was, a, I thought I was bad. I was a heathen. He was a worse heathen than me. And he was a preacher's kid. Man, he taught me stuff. I, I don't even want to go there. Church, aren't you glad for the grace of God? How many know we serve a God of a second chance, folks? Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I, listen to me as we close. I was not in a church setting. I was not in a church. I was in a secular nightclub singing secular music. But somebody took the time to come in off the street and tell me about Jesus. Church, how many know our ministry, your and mine, is outside these doors? Church, how many know we've got to go into the highways and the byways and compel them to come in? We can preach and we can sing in front of thousands of church folks. But how many know, folks, I want to hang out with the drunks, you know, and the prostitutes and people that are lonely and depressed and deprived church because that's what God loves. He loves people like that. And it's our duties as Christians. Church, did you know you're the only Bible that some folks are ever going to read? How many know that? Church, if you just live your life depressed and down and out, nobody going to hang around you. But folks, how many know the joy of the Lord is your strength? Church, when you got a smile on your face, people say, Brother, what do you got that I don't got? You see, they want it. 
And then that's a weird way to tell and witness to somebody about Jesus. And Brother Tony Denuzio come in there and we sat in the back and we started reminiscing about old days. And about halfway through the conversation, I'll never forget this. He said, Roy, I know you ain't singing no place Sunday night. I want you to come go to church with me. Ladies and gentlemen, before that, he told me his testimony that he just got saved a week ago at his daddy's church. You see, Tony Denuzio was hooked on drugs and alcohol. And ladies and gentlemen, I did that myself. I did everything that the world had to offer. You know, when you're singing secular music, you have a little money. And folks, how many know money don't buy you happiness, it buys you things? How many know that? Amen? Ladies and gentlemen, when you have all the alcohol stacked up in your truck, you have all kind of friends come out of the woodwork. When you have drugs of every kind, you have all kind of friends you thought you never had. When you got money, you got all kind of friends. And folks, how many know they weren't your friends in the first place? They're there to rob and steal from you. They're fair weather friends. But church, I'm going to know today as we close, there's only one friend that will stick closer than a brother. And his name is Jesus. Your friends can't say that. Your family can't say that. But how many know I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I'll be there to the very end. Church, that's a promise of God today. Listen to me as we close. Ladies and gentlemen, he asked, he said, Roy, I know you ain't singing no place Sunday night. I want you to come go to church with me Sunday night. Church, how many know when you was out in the world, you made up every excuse not to go to church? Y'all remember those days? I don't know, Tony. I appreciate you offering me, but I'm going to practice with the band. He said, no, I ain't taking no for an answer. You come and go to church with me. And when Tony Denuzio asked you something, you better do it. He said, if you don't, I've got friends. Now, I, I grew up in the old neighborhood, and I know exactly what he meant. And I don't want no part of no wise guys. I said, all right, all right Tony, where, where do you want me? Six o'clock, I'm picking you up. Ladies and gentlemen, I might have been in the big city up north, but there was a little free will Baptist church, little Baptist church there. I wasn't afraid to preach the gospel. Church, I sat on the very back row. In church, I had that white knuckle. How many know what the white knuckle thing is? I ain't coming off this pew. I don't care what they do up in this church. I ain't budging out this pew. How many know when you was in the world, you said that too? Amen. But folks, how many know his grace is sufficient tonight? Amen. Listen to me. Man, I, every singer come up to the microphone, pastor put me under conviction. Every song they sang, my heart, boom, boom, boom. I thought I was going to have a nervous breakdown or a heart attack right in the middle of church. And you see, I wanted to get up and leave many times, but I had Tony Denuzzi on one side of me, and I had this large lady over here. I couldn't get up if I wanted to get up. Church, how many know God's got a sense of humor sometimes? Like a tree planted, I shall not be moved. Church, you know why? Because God had a purpose for me being here. God has got a purpose for you. You could have been, you could have chose anywhere you wanted to be today. You could have stayed home. You could have went to another church. But how many know you choose to come to old fashioned day to day? God is destined of God that you're here. Oh, somebody here needs to hear the truth. How many know the truth will set you free today? Ladies and gentlemen, I sat back on that back and I heard a man of God get up behind a sacred desk and he preached like I never heard a person preach before. And ladies and gentlemen, you see, the call of God has been on my life many times and I rejected God. See, I want to be an entertainer. I want to be in show business. And he said, son, I've called you once and I've called you twice. This is the last time I'm calling you. And folks, I heard that as clear as a bell. And church, how many of the Bible declares my sheep I know my voice. How many know you know the voice of God when he's talking to you, folks? And God was talking to me. That pastor, he got up and preached one verse out of the Bible, literally changed my life. And I heard it ever since I was a kid. I see these children here. Ever since I was a kid, I heard this, but it was the way he said it. He said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I may know that verse. You've heard it all your life. But that night, October of 1977, I heard it clear as a bell, folks. I heard the voice of God calling me. And folks, that night I had to make up my mind whether to keep serving man and the songs that I was singing or whether to serve God. And he was the one that gave me the talent in the first place. Folks, as we close here today, you've tried what the world had to offer you and it failed, didn't it? You've tried relationship after relationship, failed. You've tried drugs, failed. you tried alcohol, failed. I'm, trying, I'm asking you to try Jesus. He'll never fail you. He'll never leave you, and he'll be there to the very end. Church, that's a promise. Let every man and let every devil be a liar, but let the word of God be true here today. Somebody say amen. amen. This word is true, folks. He does not lie. God does not lie. There are some of you who have been through some things in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, that devil has robbed you. He's robbed you of your children. He's robbed you of your grandchildren. He's robbed you of your health. He's robbed you of your finances. He's robbed you of your joy. There's somebody here today say, God used me different ways in the spiritual realm it's just because of my walk with the Lord. There's somebody here today, thank you, Lord, that you have tossed and you have turned at night. You can't go to sleep. You're restless. You can't get, you can't get set and settled. But I say to you today, I'm talking to a person here today, that if you give it to God today and surrender your life, 
God will set you free. He'll give you rest. Have to know. Amen. Come all you heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Somebody here needs rest today. Just because you shake the preacher's hand don't mean you say. Because you came. Because grandpa had built the church don't mean you say. Church, how many know you must be born again? Just because you shake the preacher's hand and sign a card, folks, don't mean you say. Church, how many know it takes surrender in your life? When you surrender, Eric, he don't want part of you, folks. He wants all of you. I surrender all. You remember the old hymn of the church? I love that. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that the people may know that thou art the Lord thy God. And thou hast turned their hearts back again. Here at Old Fashioned Day, folks, how many know this altar is not just a thing that just they, they build up here? It's a purpose. It's when we kneel down. I heard a song one time say, Tears are a language. That God understands. Folks, here today as we close, some of your family members lost, as lost can be, they're on their way to a devil's hell. And church, what are we doing about it? You know, we just can't keep on going through life. We've got to tell somebody about the Lord. Folks, you're the only Bible that some folks are ever going to read. How are you living your life? Are you saved today? Pastor, as we close here today, I was singing up in Pennsylvania. This big old church called the Lighthouse Church had a lot of people, and I gave the altar call, and me and the pastor were standing right down there. And folks, if you need Jesus, you come right now. And ladies and gentlemen, I'll never forget this as long as I live. I had an elderly lady on the fifth row back. She got up, she came down. She was 84 years old. Listen to me, church. She had been to that church for 69 of her years. 69 years at that church. She was 84 years old. She never accepted the Lord except for that night. I said, ma'am, what do you want from the Lord? She goes, I want to be saved. And you talking about tears? Just started flowing from her face. Big old crocodile tears. I said, ma'am, what you're fixing to do is the greatest decision you're ever going to make in your life. And because of what you're going to do, the angels are going to have a party in heaven. They're going to rejoice because another one's come home. And I said, just take my hands and repeat what the pastor says to you as a sinner's prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, that lady of 84 years old gave her heart and life to Jesus. That You see, everybody in the church thought she was saved. Because she, every time the doors were open, she was there on the fifth row. She supported that local church, but she wasn't saved. Church, you must be born again. Today, the grace of God will set you free, folks. It just depends on you how close that you want to walk with God. Folks, how many know that Jesus loves you today? He loves, it doesn't matter what you've done in your life. Isaiah 42 and 22 says, but this is a people who've been robbed and, and stole from. Church, you've been, you've been robbed. <laughs> Amen. Listen, well, uh, people have been robbed and spoiled. They've all been stared in holes. You've been hid in prison houses. You've been for a prey, and none delivered for a spoil, and none saved for store. Church, if you don't hear anything else, Brother Poole says, listen, I didn't know that we serve a God of restoration. What the devil has blatantly stolen from your church, your pastor, your family, God wants to restore to you wholly. Folks, he wants to restore health. We thank God for the good doctors. How many know we got good doctors out there? But how many know the touch of God is like no other touch before? The great physician, one touch of the master's hand can change your life. Folks, I want you to stand your feet with me here today as we close. As I sing this song, this altar is going to be open, folks. And I want you to know that Jesus loves you with passion. He loves you more than anything, folks. He's got a plan for your life. Ladies and gentlemen, as I sing this song, it's called Alter Your Problems, that he will see you through. I truly believe that, folks. The pastor's standing here, but the Jenkins is here. He wants to pray the prayer of faith with you. Trust the Lord, folks. Don't trust man, but trust God. He'll make a difference in your life. Listen as we close. I've been down, disappointed. Listen. I've had problems. Seems no way out. Church, I looked here and I looked there, but no answers came about. You ever been there? I have to listen to that. But then I called upon the one who takes away all fear and doubt. Just alter all our and leave here with the shout. How many believe you can do that today? Now, listen. We'll just alter our problems. And he will see you through. Cast all our cares upon Jesus. For he really cares for you. Take your burden. 